turn it on and get to get to work. <clears throat> when you do the when you do the get to the end of all the landmarks. Mm. You read this. Um, Thank you. Just the not crossed out. Ah. Okay, we are going to start. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. Welcome to this meeting of the subcommittee on landmarks, public sighting, and maritime uses. I'm Council Member Peter Ku. I will be chairing today's hearing for Chair Adams, who is unable to be here today. I'm joined by Council Member Traeger and Council Member Miller. Oh, no, no, Council Member Barron. Miller is not here yet. No. Today, we will begin by voting on 15 historic landmark destinations and two HPD applications that we heard at our September 4th meeting. The historic landmark destinations include seven historic landmark destinations related to the history of the LGBT movement. LU490, the Gay Activist Alliance Firehouse, former engine company number 13 in Council Member, Ch uh, Council Member Chin's district in Manhattan. LU491, Cafe Chino, LU-492, the Women's Liberation Center, and LU-493, the historic landmark destination of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community center, all located in the Speaker's District in Manhattan. LU-494, the James Baldwin residence located in Councilmember Rosendahl District in Manhattan, and LU-495, the Audrey Law residence in Councilmember Rose District in Staten Island. Huh. From 1972 to 1987, my district, no, not my this is a statement uh, from Council Member Rose. And, and she asked me to read into the, the, the records. From 1972 to 1987, my district was the home of Audrey Law, who lived at 2017 St. Paul's Avenue with her children and her partner, Frances uh, Clayton. While living there, she wrote some of her most groundbreaking words, including, including the from the land where other people live. She served as poet laureate of New York State and made lasting contributions through her speeches and her writings. I am proud to say this was followed by a vote from the Landmarks Preservation Commission to designate Ms. Law's residence as a landmark of LGBT, LGBT history. That designation is before this committee today, and I encourage my colleagues to vote aye, as this is a fitting celebration of Ms. Law's contributions and ongoing struggle for LGBT equality. Seven historic landmark destinations located on Broadway below 14th Street in Council Member Rivera District in Manhattan. LU-481, the A-17 Broadway Building. LU-482, the A-26 Broadway Building, now the Strand Building. LU-483, the A-30, Broadway Building, LU-484, the A32-834 Broadway Building, LU-485, the A36 Broadway Building. 
LU486, the A40 Broadway Building, and LU487, the Roosevelt Building. And two additional historic landmark destinations, LU488, the National Society of Colonial Danes in the state of New York headquarters, located in Councilmember Powers District in Manhattan, and LU489, the first Hungarian Reformed Church located in Councilmember Kalos District in Manhattan. We will also vote to approve P. Consider LU 510, the Bronze Point NCPF UDAP submitted by, LP, uh, submitted by HPD pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal, Municipal Law of New York State for approval of the designation of an urban development action area for property located at Block <coughs> 2356, Locks 2 and 72, Block 2539, Lock 1, and Parks of Locks 2 and 3, and a demat portion of East 150th Street in the Bronx, and approval of an urban development action area project for such area. The proposed action would facilitate new publicly accessible open space along the Harlem River waterfront as part of a new mixed-use development that would include approximately 1,044 units of affordable housing. Commercial and Community Facility Space. The project is located in Councilmember Ayala's district. We will also vote to approve and consider LU511 for the Brownsville South Project in Councilmember uh, submitted HPD pursuant to Article 16 of the Journal Municipal Law and Section 197C of the New York City Charter for the destination of property located at 47 New Locks Avenue, Block 3855, Lock 40, 609 615, Osborne Street, Block. 3628, Lot 9, and 120-122, Liberty Avenue, Block 3693, Locks 22 and 23, in the borough of Brooklyn as an urban development action area. Approval of an urban development area project for such an area and approval sorry and approval of the disposition of such properties to a developer selected by HPD. The, one here. the project is located in districts represented by Councilmember Barron and Councilmember Espinal. All items are supported by the affected council members. In accordance with the wishes of the affected, affected council members, I now call for a vote to approve LU numbers. 481, 482, 483, 484, 485, 486, 487, 488, 489, 490, 491, 492, 493, 494, and 495. And P consider LU numbers 
510-511. Counsel, please call the roll. Trigger. Aye. Aaron. May I be excused to explain my vote? Uh, yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just speaking briefly on LU-511, which is the Brownsville South cluster. Part of this development is located inside of my district. And these are small projects, and we had some challenges to make sure that in the end, all of the units that would be built would in fact be affordable at the income levels of those who presently live there. So we're very pleased that through some negotiations, I want to thank the staff that worked with the uh, HPD to come to another adjustment in the setting the AMIs for those that would be qualified to apply. And I'm very pleased that we're able to say that 56% of the units that are going to be built in the district that I represent will be at 50% of AMI or below, and that there will be no units at 80%, and there will be some at 60 and 70% of AMI. So I'm very pleased on the work that was done. I want to commend the staff for the work that they did, and I vote aye on all. Ku. I will aye. By a vote of three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and with zero abstentions, the items are recommended for referral to the full land use committee, and the vote is held open. Okay. We will now continue to move on and to another subject. We now move on to public hearings for today, beginning with LU 527, the UDAP designation, project approval, and disposition approval for 776-780 Mai Tai Avenue to facilitate an affordable housing development containing approximately 59 units in Councilmember Carnegie's district in Brooklyn. We are joined today by representatives of the HPD and the developer. Lacey and Toba and Andrew Murray. Yeah. You may begin after you identify your, no, you had to Please raise your right hands and identify yourselves. Lacey Tauber, HPD. Andrew Murray, Impact Brooklyn. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and in response to all council member questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, you may start, yeah. I just want to make sure you all have copies of the presentation and the testimony. Let me I'm going to take these to the sergeant. <clears throat> okay. Um, land use item number 527 is related to a ULERB application regarding the development of three city owned vacant lots at block 1754, lots 19, 20, and 22 in Brooklyn Council District 36 for a project known as 776 780 Myrtle Avenue. The application seeks UDAP designation and project approval for the three lots, as well as disposition approval for two of the lots, lot 20 and 22. One of the three lots, Lot 19, previously received approval for unrestricted disposition by the Board of Estimate in 1981, but was never sold and remains city-owned. 776 to 780 Myrtle Avenue is slated for development under HPD's Supportive Housing Loan Program, or SHLP, which funds the rehabilitation and new construction of supportive housing for the homeless, people with special needs, and other persons of low income. The development team, Impact Brooklyn, formerly known as the Pratt Area Community Council, was selected through a competitive process um, in 2013, our um, supportive housing request for qualifications. They will provide property management services as well as act as the supportive services provider. Impact Brooklyn proposes to construct a nine-story building with a total of approximately 59 affordable rental units plus a superintendent's unit and ground floor retail space. Upon completion, the building will contain approximately 45 studios, eight one-bedroom units, six two-bedroom units, and one two-bedroom unit for a superintendent. Under the SHLP guidelines, 60% or approximately 36 of the units will be affordable for homeless households referred from social service agencies such as Department of Homeless Services or DHS, and the remaining approximately 23 units will be affordable rental units to be filled through HPD's marketing guidelines. 
The target incomes for this project will be up to 60% of the area median income, or AMI. Supportive housing tenants will pay up to 30% of their income in rent. Affordable households earning up to 60% of AMI, or approximately $44,820 for one person, to $57,660 for a three-person household, will pay rents ranging from $843 for a studio to $1,290 for a two-bedroom. In response to community feedback, income average is being contemplated for this project, which would make households between 40% and 80% of AMI eligible, or households earning approximately $29,880 to $59,760 for one person to $38,440 to $57,660 for a three-person household. If income averaging is used, rents will range from $522 for a 40% AMI studio to $1,843 for an 80% AMI two-bedroom. Amenities to be included in the project include supportive services space open to all residents in the building, um, and a shared rear courtyard, community room, green roof, laundry room, and enclosed bicycle storage, as well as approximately 3,000 square feet of ground floor commercial space. Um, in order to facilitate the development of uh, this project, HPD is before the Landmark Subcommittee seeking approval of land use item number 527. And I'll turn it over to Andrew from IMPACT to talk you through the project. Hello, uh, my name is Andrew Murray. I'm a project manager at IMPACT Brooklyn. Um, not to delve too far into the details or, or repeat what Lacey had just mentioned, but uh, again, this is a project, three vacant lots on Myrtle Avenue across from the Marcy Houses in Northern Bed-Stuy. Uh, and the project, uh, we are the developer, we are Impact Brooklyn, formerly the Pratt Area Community Council. Um, for over 50 years, we have been serving the communities and neighborhoods of Central Brooklyn. Uh, we are a community development corporation uh, dedicated to fair, affordable, equitable housing. Uh, we develop, uh, offer a myriad of services, some of which are behind me. Um, so to the project specifically, uh, as Lacey said, it's a proposed nine-story building on Myrtle Avenue. It's mixed use with ground floor commercial. We'll be offering on-site social services in the basement. 60% will be devoted to supportive housing. That'll be 36 studios, efficiency units. The remainder, minus one uh, superintendent, will be uh, lottery-appointed units. Uh, again, uh, Lacey had mentioned the estimated rents and income. Uh, we are considering income averaging, so that would mean um, on average 60% AMI, but there will be 40 and 80% units as well. Again, I, I can go into greater detail um, of the, the unit distribution. We have 45 studios, eight one-bedroom units, six two-bedroom units, plus the on-site uh, superintendent. The ground floor commercial space, which is approximately 3,000 square feet, we are considering a nonprofit social enterprise uh, tenant. Uh, namely, they will be a, um, a cafe slash commercial uh, kitchen space, um, and it, they are also a workforce development provider, so they will be working for, with uh, members of the community ages 16 to 24 who are both out of school and without work. Um, and that tenant currently is Grand Low Cafe. They have uh, an, a space uh, down by Essex Crossing. We will be utilizing several passive house principles, uh, not least of which is the uh, VRF. Uh, excuse me, my acronyms do get mixed up sometimes. Uh, that is the variable refrigerant flow, um, also a tightly insulated envelope. Um, you know, to cut down uh, energy costs, create efficiencies. Uh, we'll also be utilizing several other um, green components. We have a green roof, white roof, blue roof. We are considering rain uh, gardens um, in the front of the building. We have a, uh, the green roof will be accessible to residents. Uh, we have a sunken courtyard, rear yard. Um, we're also considering 
a 35 to 45 kilowatts of solar paneling to be placed on top of the roof. And uh, we also, of course, have the on-site social services, which will be placed in the basement of the property. Uh, we are planning on six to eight staff, but that's not include uh, on-site security, which will be 24-7. Uh, we will be offering an amenity uh, uh, many services, including case management, harm reduction, uh, substance use, uh, counseling, um, and many things to help gear the population in a more healthful direction. This is a uh, design, the site plan. Uh, you're looking from the top, uh, from the bird's eye view of the building. As you can see, uh, there is a green roof. Um, it, we are currently, again, proposing to have solar paneling on top of the ninth floor. Uh, in the rear, you have the sunken courtyard and yard as well. This will be, again, nine stories. It's on a uh, three lots, uh, 75 by 100 uh, square feet total. Here you have uh, images of the cellar and ground floor. Um, as I mentioned, you will, we will be putting the uh, social services in, in the basement. They'll have community rooms, um, uh, able to utilize the back courtyard, um, and as well as the ground floor, which will also be housing the commercial tenant, which we are proposing again will be a cafe slash commercial kitchen. Uh, lastly, this is our project timeline. We were certified in April. We've gone through the processes since. Uh, we last met with the City Planning Commission in late July. Uh, we are anticipating ULIP approval sometime within the next few months. Um, and finally, we uh, hope to close after submitting a uh, state tax credit ap application to the Housing Community Renewal uh, for fall 2020 and ultimately finishing construction within two years, uh, leasing up by fall 2022. And any questions, please do not hesitate. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry I had to go across the street to, uh, to vote. Uh, for, so I'm asking Council Member Barron to take over the chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you much for your presentation. I just have a few questions. Uh, I believe you said that 36 units are studios? Yes. Okay, so the question that I have is, do you have the dimensions of the studio apartments? Yes, uh, I do. On average, the studios will run uh, 30, 360 square, uh, net square feet, 360. 360, okay. And that's of the 45 studios total on average. So there are 45 studios? 45 in the building, but 36. 36 are reserved for, the for the supportive right. residents. And the other question that I have then is, which of those units are that are one and two, fam two bedroom apartments will be eligible for those who are in support of as well? Because there uh, weren't that many that you indicated were a part of the program. Yeah, the one and two bedroom units are designated currently for the lottery, uh, for the 40 to 80% AMI. The, uh, 36 um, dwelling units <coughs> with respect to the supportive residents are all studios. All of those, okay. So all of the supportive uh, personnel, uh, all of the supportive residents will be in studio apartments. Yes, and these specifically are going to be um, residents aged 55 and older. Oh, yeah. that's, that's important to know, yes. that's good. And the uh, solar panels that you're planning on having, what will they provide? What energy will they provide? Uh, as it's currently drawn up, and of course this can change, um, but we are planning as proposed, again, it's early stages, about 35 to 45 kilowatt uh, of energy, and that will most likely uh, provide energy, electricity for the common area. Common areas. Okay, great. Which is pretty extensive, of course, in a, a nine-story building. Yes. Uh, are there any other questions from any other panels? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. We're not doing that. Thank you. 
Are there any members of the public who wish to testify on these items? Seeing none, I close today's public hearing and these items are laid over. Next, we will hear four historic district designations in the Sunset Park neighborhood of Brooklyn, represented by Councilmember Menchaca. LU 496 is the Sunset South South Sunset Park South Historic District. LU 497 is the Sunset Park North Historic District. LU 498 is the Sunset Park 50th Street Historic District. And LU 499 is the Central Sunset Park 50th Street Historic District. We will also hold a public hearing on LU 528, the LPC designation of the Bay Ridge Parkway Doctors Row Historic District in Council Member Brandon's district also in Brooklyn. I will now recognize Council Member Benchaka to offer remarks. Thank you, uh, Chair Barron, for uh, giving me this opportunity to say hello and welcome. Uh, when I started this, this application that we're seeing before us has an incredible story that is rooted in the power of Sunset Park and the voices of the people who live there, who work there, uh, and care for Sunset Park. Um, the application before you also has an incredible story about the Landmarks team at the city listening and really understanding the needs of Sunset Park. And the beautiful thing about it was that, like many stories that start with out seeing eye to eye, Discussion and dialogue, productive dialogue happened, and both um, uh, pressures began to understand that there was a common ground, and research was done, uh, and petitions were signed, photographs were taken, st stories were told, and what you see is the result of that incredible work, and residents in Sunset Park did not stop, and nor should have they. And the government did not stop, and nor should have they. And we didn't stop until we got to a point where we are today. And these designations uh, that really, in a lot of ways, they're historic for historic districts, but they also are unprecedented in a way, um, in the way that they came out. And I think that was a that was a big gesture from uh, the Landmarks Preservation uh, Commission that said. Sunset Park deserves something different, and, and we got that. And so these blocks are beautiful blocks, and I hope that if you are listening and don't know Sunset Park, to come and see these beautiful blocks, to really see the appreciation of the work that our communities have done to keep these blocks intact, because we are facing some incredible pressures of gentrification and uh, pressures of foreign investment that are coming in and buying these buildings, tearing them down, and destroying the fabric of our community. And that we're saying no to today. Uh, so I'm really proud uh, to be representing these incredible, incredible families uh, and the incredible organizations that are behind them and the nonprofits and the energy. So I'm just a proud moment, a, a proud person, a proud New Yorker today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, council member. We are joined today by representatives of the Landmark, Landmark Preservation Commission. We have Kate McHale, and Anthony Fabre, Fabre. And before you begin, council will swear you in. Please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and in response to all council member questions? I do. I do. Thank you. Thank you, you may begin. Okay. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, council member Barron and subcommittee members. Um, I am Kate Lemus McHale, Director of Research at the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Thank you for the opportunity to present these four districts in Sunset Park today. The Sunset Park Historic Districts, shown here on our map of New York City landmarks and historic districts, are the result of an extensive study of the Sunset Park neighborhood in response to requests from the Sunset Park Landmarks Committee and with the strong support of Councilmember Menchaca. We thank you for that. Um, their designation is aligned with an agency priority under Chair Carroll to study communities underrepresented by landmarks. We studied a large area encompassing the blocks between 4th and 7th Avenues and 60th and 40th Streets, shown here. In such a large study area, we developed a framework for identifying historic district boundaries that should include intact rows of buildings that exemplify <coughs> Sunset Park's historical and architectural development and incorporate blocks with the strongest character, highest integrity, and cohesiveness that together create a distinct sense of place. 
As part of our process of studying and proposing historic districts, we do extensive owner outreach, and we held two public meetings in Sunset Park to describe our proposal and speak with homeowners about working with the Landmarks Commission. Chinese and Spanish language interpretation services were offered at both these meetings for anyone who needed translation. Following our outreach, uh, the four districts were calendared in January 2019. They contain a total of 539 properties and consist of the most cohesive and intact concentrations of high quality architecture in Sunset Park, representing its primary periods of development. At the public hearing on May 7th, 26 people spoke in favor of all four districts, including Carlos Menchaca, Council Member Menchaca, and representatives from the Sunset Park Landmarks Committee and its Business Improvement District, the Historic Districts Council, the New York Landmarks Conservancy, the Society for the Architecture of the City. Testimony related to specific districts included one person who spoke in favor of Sunset Park 50th Street, one in favor of Central Sunset Park, and six who spoke in opposition to Sunset Park South. The commission also received 42 written submissions in favor of all four historic districts, including from Assembly Member Felix Ortiz and Community Board 7, as well as two written submissions in favor of Sunset Park South, eight in favor of 50th Street, four in favor of the Central Sunset Park, and one in favor of Sunset Park North. The commission also received five written submissions opposed to one or more of the districts. Sunset Park's historical development was closely connected to its working waterfront, in particular the vast complex of Bush Terminal and the arrival of public transportation through the area. Long, consistent rows of houses were designed by Brooklyn architects for speculative developers, many as two and three family homes. Early owners and residents of Sunset Park include German, Irish, Italian, Danish, Finnish, and Swedish immigrants, and today the neighborhood retains lively immigrant communities and character. The neighborhood took its name from the park, completed in 1911. This amenity, along with the extension of an elevated railway along 3rd Avenue in 1893 and the announcement of the planned 4th Avenue subway in 1905, spurred rapid residential development, which was essentially completed by World War I. These maps show Sunset Park in 1898 and 1903, vividly illustrating the extent of development in just a five-year period as it extended eastward from the industrial port. And just a note on the layout of these slides, our maps are rotated, and so east um, is generally down, west is up towards the port, and north is to the right. There are three major phases of development in uh, Sunset Park. Late 19th century development is typically characterized by row houses with brownstone and brick facades with flat fronts or projecting bays, such as the row shown on the left here on 58th Street. Early 20th century development between 1901 and 1909, we see more two-family row houses and with more ornate elements uh, constructed throughout the neighborhood. And development between 1910 and 1920, after the subway extended through the neighborhood, is generally characterized by larger apartment buildings, flats, and tenements, such as the one shown on the right, which became a Finnish co-op. Uh, this map of building dates in all four districts represents the general distribution of these primary periods of development uh, throughout the neighborhood. Sunset Park's older 19th century buildings tend to be closer to 4th Avenue at the top of the map. Buildings constructed after the turn of the century are more prevalent in the blocks between 5th and 7th Avenues. And together, these four districts contain the strongest concentrations of the three periods of development history in Sunset Park. So now I'll just take you quickly through each one. Uh, the Sunset Park South Historic District consists of approximately 285 residential buildings located between 54th and 59th Streets and 4th and 5th Avenues. This historic district has a high level of integrity as is shown in the predominantly green color on the map. A portion of 57th Street contains buildings either with major, major alterations or of different scales and building dates that did not reflect the historic character of surrounding streets and, and this portion of 57th Street was not included in the district. Uh, the area includes a strong concentration of Sunset Park's oldest buildings. It was mostly constructed in the 1890s. 
and it contains rows of stone and brick fronted houses shown on this map of row house typologies. And what the map shows is the different um, materials that are used in the facades as well as the different bay shapes. But what we found really are um, very strong rows of consistent um, style and, um, and shape. And the, in these images, we see stone and brick row houses within the Sunset Park South Historic District featuring angled and round bays, intact stoops and railings, and carved and molded ornament. The houses often incorporate decorative elements and alternating patterns to differentiate houses in long rows. These images from 56th Street show examples of the rich ornamentation found in the neighborhood in this historic district. The Sunset Park 50th Street Historic District consists of two rows of 25 houses framing 50th Street between 4th and 5th Avenues. Constructed between 1897 and 1903, this section of 50th Street is one of the neighborhood's finest historic blocks, notable for its cohesive rows of remarkably well-preserved brownstone fronted houses. All of the houses here were designed by just two architects, so it's incredibly consistent. The houses on this block um, feature high stoops, projecting bays, and richly textured brownstone fronts. Their facades combine the rough surfaces and curvilinear ornament of the Romanesque Revival style with the angular forms and classical details of the Renaissance Revival style. With its unified rows and high degree of historical integrity, the Sunset Park 50th Street Historic District remains one of its neighborhood's standout blocks. The Central Sunset Park Historic District consists of approximately 148 buildings located on 47th and 48th Streets between 5th and 6th Avenues and along 6th Avenue. Constructed between 1897 and 1906, the central area incorporates some of the area's outstanding turn-of-the-century residential architecture and includes intact blocks found along 6th Avenue that extend the character of the mid-blocks and strengthen the sense of place. The district's consistency in age, type, and high integrity uh, are, is shown in these maps. The district's row houses are clad in brick, limestone, brownstone, or a combination, and its streetscapes feature consistent cornice lines, a rhythm of projecting bays and high stoops with intact iron railings, and elaborate carved ornament. And here you can see some examples of the intricate uh, carved detail and stoops uh, within the Central Park, Central Sunset Park Historic District. And finally, the Sunset Park North Historic District consists of approximately 56 buildings on the south side of 44th Street between 5th and 7th Avenues. The two well-preserved blocks overlooking Sunset Park are notable for their cohesive rows of limestone and brick-fronted houses and apartment houses, all representing the neighborhood's architectural development just following the turn of the 20th century. These blocks have a special character along the park. They include a unique row of limestone fronted houses, one of the neighborhood's most intact and consistent blocks of brick flat fronted row houses, and four apartment buildings designed in 1913 with an eclectic mix of classical and arts and crafts detailing. Overlooking Sunset Park on a sloping hill, this block has a strong sense of place um, highlighted by its fine architecture and natural topography. With their geographical distribution throughout the neighborhood, the four historic districts capture the primary periods of development and resulting range of residential building typologies in Sunset Park. Together they tell the story of Sunset Park's development history and capture its most significant architecture and streetscapes. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for the panel or comments? Yeah, I just want to ask, um, you know, so much of, of the presentation really was rooted in uh, analysis that your team put so much time and effort in going out into the community. How important was it for the community to organize uh, so early and present so much information to this process? How important was that work from the community? Oh, it's very important, and we appreciate it very much. Um, we, of course, have to do our own study and our own analysis, and and we um, took the input that was provided to us, and then looked, you know, really at the whole neighborhood and area to analyze 
um, the request within that broader area, and that really allowed us um, to definitively um, identify these strongest areas that together tell such an important story of the neighborhood's development. And I think that's just a, uh, an important uh, point to make about the, the, the kind of ground swell support. Uh, the committee, not just the committee, the community board, and all the businesses, and, and I think it's just like an important part of this uh, the story narrative. Um, the, the, and the last question I have is: you have we're looking at four applications at once. Um, I remember one, at one point we thought that was just never going to be possible, and that was hard because I think no one wanted to let go of that possibility. And here we are, with four different districts, non-contiguous never really happened before. Can you talk about the importance of how, or what makes this so important to look at four districts in one neighborhood together? Well, it was, and as you said, I think we um, we came at this in a creative way, and a lot of the um, discussions that we had about how to do that and the, the support that we had from all of you was so important. Um, it, this is a district that has these areas, but in between are areas where there have been more changes or the development has led to you know, less consistency in the streetscapes. And just in terms of how to um, really recognize and protect those, those areas that stand out and that are really retain their historic character, um, I, I think it was a wonderful sort of process, and the framework that was developed really to get to this was very important. I, I couldn't agree more, and, and that's exactly what we're doing. We are protecting Sunset Park. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, now we, we now move on to LU528. Dr. Schroll? Yeah. Do you want to give testimony on those? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> there are other ones, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, good afternoon, Council Member Koo and subcommittee members. Um, I am Kate Lemus McHale at, of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Thank you for this opportunity um, to present the Bay Ridge Parkway Doctors Row Historic District designated on June 25th. The historic is, district is the first in Bay Ridge and as are the Sunset Park districts, the first in Sunset Park, um, and is a distinguished example of the neighborhood's transformation from a suburban resort community to a middle class urban neighborhood in the early 20th century. In addition to the high quality of its architecture, it has acquired a noteworthy association as a doctor's row thanks to the number of medical professionals who have lived and had offices on the block, both historically and currently. The historic district is located between 4th and 5th Avenues in the Bay Ridge neighborhood of Brooklyn, as shown on this map. A request to evaluate the block came from the community with support from Councilmember Brannon and Community Board 10. At its public hearing on May 14th, and in written testimony, the commission received support from 11 organizations and individuals, including State Senator Andrew Gonardis, Council Member Justin Brannon, Brooklyn Community Board 10, Historic Districts Council, and the New York Landmarks Conservancy. There was no opposition to designation. Bay Ridge was primarily an agricultural community until the late 19th century, when resorts and suburban residences were constructed along the shore. Bay Ridge Parkway was originally envisioned as a boulevard to connect to Shore Drive along New York Bay, and the historic district is a prominent tree-lined block. The plan to construct the 4th Avenue subway line announced in 1903 was the primary catalyst for rapid speculative development in Bay Ridge and jubilant realty men, as you can see in this advertisement. Um, it reached 86th Street in Bay Ridge in 1916. 
Bay Ridge Development Company was organized in 1904, and its secretary, builder Arthur Douglas Constant, was charged with constructing row houses on both sides of Bay Ridge Parkway, between 4th and 5th Avenues, shown here in an advertisement from 1907 that were, quote, calculated to supply a long-felt want for one-family houses in Bay Ridge and will constitute the only complete block of such residences in the section, end quote. The entire block was constructed in segments over seven years between 1906 and 1913, but primarily between 1906 and 1909. A.D. Constant constructed most of the buildings and the rows were designed by just two architects, Benjamin Driesler, a prolific Brooklyn architect, and William Flanagan. The block developed with a cohesive appearance overall. In our evaluation and boundary analysis of the potential district, LPC staff studied a broader area and found that this block in particular stands out within the larger neighborhood context due to its high architectural quality and consistency, which in combination with the Parkway's boulevard feeling creates a strong sense of place and historic character. Within the historic district, the row houses are set back behind spacious areaways and are primarily characterized by limestone facades bowed or angled fronts, low stoops, stone window and door surrounds, and embellished cornices typical of the Renaissance Revival style. The north side of the block is shown here. It's architecturally very consistent. On the right is a brick building at the eastern end of the block, which was constructed to house a doctor's office, a trend that would become ubiquitous in later years. The south side of the street includes brick row houses shown on the left, limestone fronted row houses similar to the north side shown on the right, including eight with colonial revival entrances that were advertised as house colonials and described by the Bay Ridge Development Company as having, quote, an exterior design that is something entirely new in house building, end quote. As this map illustrates, the historic district has a high level of integrity. Alterations are mostly limited to the replacement of doors and windows, changes to areaways, or the addition of a basement doctor's office entrance, such as shown on the left. Census data and telephone directories provided information regarding medical professionals who lived or had offices on this block between 1910 and 1960, indicating a rapid increase in medical professionals on the block. Among the first reference to it as a doctor's row appears um, to be from a Brooklyn Daily Eagle real estate advertisement in 1949. By 1950 and continuing into the 1960s as shown on this map, well over half of the buildings housed doctors and other medical professionals, um, either with offices or in residence. Other blocks in the city have been referred to as doctor's rows, including examples within LPC-designated districts in the South Bronx, Manhattan, and Brooklyn. The term seems to have typically been used for promotional real estate purposes and to emphasize particularly elegant blocks within a neighborhood. In these two photos taken in 1907 and 2019, 112 years apart, you can see the block still looks very much as it did in the first decade of the 20th century. It strongly reflects the architectural and historical development of this section of Bay Ridge and still houses doctor's offices. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present this historic district. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. There are no questions from council members. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Your excuse. Uh, now we are proceeding to public panels. Uh, we, first, uh, we have Yvette uh, uh, Asur, Aguirre, yeah. Juan, no, Jane Hudis Jimenez, and Lena Malkin. Yeah, three people there, sir. Uh, you may begin after you identify yourself. Yeah, you just take... Whoever want to go first, go first.
Ah, okay. Is it on now? Okay. I usually could use. Okay, my name is Ibera Aguirre. I'm a resident of Sunset Park. I own a brownstone on 47th Street since 1974. Um, I've been in this community from the time I was a child. Um, we have been working on this process of, of maintaining our brownstones uh, from the time that I could remember. We're going back about at least 30 or 40 years. We have had the support of every council person on, um, for the past 20 years. We had the support, we have the support of Carlos Menchaca for the past seven years. We had the support of Sara Gonzalez for 10 and a half years, almost 11 years. We had the support of Alex uh, Angel Rodriguez before then. So this is a history of support from our elected officials. We have our congresswoman who has a uh, Nidia Velasquez for the last 20 years, who has also been very supportive of this movement and uh, the, maintenance, the maintenance of these brownstones have been so kept by this community. Um, we have all protected them like they were our babies, and we have, we're very grateful to have gotten to this point, and so we really would love to make sure that this is supported and that we get through this process. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Ku. Um, my name is Jan Hudis Jimenez. Um, I live at 554 48th Street in Brooklyn in the central, um, the what's being called the Central Sunset Park designated area. Um, I've been a homeowner there with, with my husband uh, for 20 years. Um, so I'm going to read my statement just because it'll be more efficient, I think. Um, the landmarking initiative before you today represents a unique opportunity to celebrate the built environment of Sunset Park by protecting by protecting blocks that best represent the neighborhood's historic contribution to Brooklyn and New York City. The four historic districts designated by the Landmark uh, Preservation Committee instill a sense of place, history, and pride for all who live, work, and simply stroll through our beautiful neighborhood of Sunset Park. The, this proposal is the culmination of an amazing neighborhood effort to preserve the architectural integrity of a small portion of Sunset Park. I am very fortunate to live on a block that is still visually cohesive and showcases the architectural form and beauty that creates the type of beautiful streetscapes that we're seeking to preserve. My husband and I were block captains for this effort, and with the help of neighbors who speak the many languages spoken on our block, we had conversations about this initiative with residents in every home on our block. Without exception, we heard overwhelming support for preservation efforts as our neighbors expressed dismay over the architectural changes being made on surrounding blocks as stoops, cornices, and lintels are replaced, rooftop additions are built, grand parlor floor windows are diminished in size by, with brick infill, and entire stone facades are replaced by brick or tile. In the most disturbing instances, we see entire houses being demolished from the ground up and replaced with out of context and out of scale new buildings. When such changes happen to even a single building, the impact reverberates up and down the block. It diminishes the visual glory of, the, of our streets and it forever alters a block that stood in harmony for more than a century. Sunset Park is in danger of losing its sense of place and its neighborhood feel. These characteristics that make our wonderful neighborhood special and unique foster a sense of authentic human attachment and belonging. They inspire us to care for our built environment and with their preservation will contribute to a legacy of community history and pride on which future generations will build. I encourage you to, to uh, accept our application, to approve our application. Thank you. Thank you. Next, yeah. Yeah, hi, everyone. How's that? Better? Uh, my name is Nina Malkin. Um, I live on 54th Street, and I'm a relative newcomer to uh, Sunset Park, we are, my husband and I are there 15 years. Uh, when we were looking for houses, we looked all over Brooklyn, all over Queens, a little bit in Jersey, forgive us. Um, <laughs> we kept coming back to Sunset Park because it was just so beautiful. And we thought, how could regular people live in these beautiful homes? But all we saw around us as we walked up and down the blocks were regular people. 
and their children playing on the stoops and their dogs being walked and curbed and taken care of and their gardens being small little courtyard gardens being maintained and we kept coming back and back and until we found the place that we looked in and our jaw dropped and we were like this is home um, when we moved in we felt like we belonged here because it felt like everybody belonged here everybody deserves a beautiful place to live um, and these were the kind of I mean I'm a Brooklyn native and these were the kind of two family and three family homes that I you know grew up around only just not that nice <laughs> um, and when we started to see some of the development that was going on in the neighborhood by people who didn't actually live there it was very disturbing to us. We thought, w what, what's going on? What are they doing to our beautiful place? Um, and it started to lose not just its beauty, but its feel. Um, people didn't look, e not, newer people didn't look each other in the eye and didn't say hello. And when we found out that we could get involved in trying to landmark the neighborhood, that's when our block and everybody else's block really started to come together. And I started to meet ladies and gentlemen from other blocks that I didn't know so well. So um, I don't really have a prepared statement, but I do want to thank the LPC for their efforts, the Sunset Park Landmarks Committee, led by Lynn Massimo, for getting this off the ground, uh, the council. Um, and Mr. Manchaka for everything that, that you all have done. Um, thanks so much, and please do um, approve our application. Thank you. Next panel, Maria Volker, Lynn Mas Massimo. Sir? Jason Stutz. You want to fall? Cynthia Phyllis. Take the vote. Oh. Oh. So, so before they begin? Yeah. Yeah. Before the you guys start, we had to make uh, uh, we had to take a vote from Council Member Miller. Yeah. You want to call? Uh, one second. Okay. On the LU numbers 481, 482, 483, 484, 485, 486, 487, 488, 489, 490, 491, 492, 493, 494, and 495, and pre-considered LU numbers 510 and 511. Council Member Miller, how do you vote? I don't know. Thank you. With a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero in abstentions, the items are recommended to the full land use committee. Thank you, Councilmember Miller. Uh, now you guys can start after you identify yourself. Yeah. Is this thing on? No. Yeah, please speak to the mic. Yeah. Is this thing on? Uh, my name is Lynn Massimo. Uh, I live at 526 47th Street in Brooklyn. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Council Member uh, Ku, for chairing today and for the other council members who are here. And Council Member Menchaca, who's been with us at every meeting. Thank you. <laughs> um, in uh, 2012, I spearheaded the Sunset Park Landmarks Committee, which is a grassroots organization that's been fighting for landmarking protection for our neighborhood for seven years. But before the incarnation of this particular effort in in the 1980s sunset parkers fought for protection and successfully got the neighborhood onto the national register so today you're seeing the culmination of decades of sunset parkers passionate dedication to preserving our neighborhood uh, on many blocks uh, generations of sunset parkers have kept their row houses intact and looking historic but rampant, out-of-context renovations are erasing that history. I've included some photos of the, of the beautiful, and then the other two pages are the rampant, out-of-context renovations. That history, which is both the history of architecture and the history of an immigrant community, it deserves to be honored and preserved. And, and while preserving the history, we can still embrace the future 
On Friday, solar panels were installed on my roof, and it sailed through the LPC approval process. So this, we got past and future, you know, happy together. So, um, <clears throat> and when, I'm, when I speak, please hear not only my single voice, but the voice of literal thousands that support preserving Sunset Park. Our organization did um, an enormous amount of outreach. We did m more than 16 outreach events in the neighborhood. We gave more than seven walking tours. We gave, we gave trolley tours. We had a trolley. <laughs> we gave trolley tours. Um, and we canvassed um, door to door on um, I, uh, about 16 blocks. So um, who supports it? Over six, uh, sorry, over 3,000 Sunset Park residents signed our petition in support. Over 400 homeowners wrote support letters. Our council member Menchaca, Assembly member uh, Felix Ortiz, Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, former state senator Jesse Hamilton, Community Board 7, uh, and other community organizations, which are Uprose and Sunset Park, Fifth Avenue Bid, and the Chinese American Planning Council, Greenwood Cemetery, the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce, the Bethel Ship Norwegian United Methodist Church. They're all in support. Um, I am also here as a member of the Community Board 7, and I did uh, bring a uh, letter from the board um, which reaffirms their unanimous support of all four historic districts. So um, thank you very much for your time, and um, please vote yes on all four districts. Thank you. Good afternoon, buenas tardes. I am Maria Roca. I am here not only representing myself as a long time resident of Sunset Park, meaning 1964 when my family first came to Sunset Park, but also the membership and of, of the members of Friends of Sunset Park. And by the way, we also submitted a letter of, a, of uh, support. Oh, uh, it's okay, no, just wanna go on record. <laughs> I know it's, I'm a, um, much of what I would say here has been said about the dedication of this community for generations, for generations, that has brought us to this moment, and you, you, you use the right word, culminated in this day. It is a good day indeed. Um, there are some bitter um, memories because certainly it should be a bigger, num a larger number of homes that are um, landmark, but has been said before, some of them no longer worthy of landmarking because of the greed of some that didn't appreciate it and some to whom what we wanted to honor, what want to honor, want to preserve, doesn't really resonate with them. So for either or. So let's start here. All I can say is that I hope to be back here. Uh, for a ne I don't relax <laughs> for a next round after we come up for air to add to this because we know that can happen so I want to uh, and it should happen because if we do not uh, stay focused and intent on preserving not only Sunset Park but many many other uh, New York communities that face extinction um, we see it in the paper every day. It's in the news every day. Uh, New York will not longer be the New York that we all love and care about. So as before, certainly want to uh, thank the many people who for generations have worked on this in one way or another to the two Lynns, mm -hmm. the other Lynn not being here, of the Sunset Park Landmarks Committee, um, HDC, for being a staunch supporter and always there uh, for us, our councilmen and um, everybody else. Um, and I hope to see you all here in the near future adding to this. Um, so yes, without a question, um, please approve because if not, you're not gonna get rid of us. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Cynthia Felix um, and I live on 50th Street between 4th and 5th Avenue. 
uh, honorable council people and members, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak this afternoon. I would want to thank the LPC for their support and flexibility with our community and letting us do a very unique uh, proposal with four distinct districts, uh, especially for the 50th Street proposal, which is a standalone street. Um, and I want to thank uh, Councilman Nchaka for his vision and dedication to Sunset Park and always saying presente when we need him. I want to thank the Lynn for starting uh, the Sunset Park um, Landmark Commission and um, always being there for us. And most importantly, I want to thank the, uh, my neighbors and uh, the homeowners and the tenants for their tireless efforts to maintain a 100 plus year home. It isn't easy, folks. Uh, you break a wall and something else pops up that you have to fix. Mm -hmm. You find a hole and you have to maintain it to integrity and it's not an easy thing to do. But a group of us was dedicated enough to do that, and that's why we're here today. It was a collective effort. Uh, it's not easy. It's, the easy thing is to make it new and to put new things. But we didn't want to do that. Uh, we looked around, and I was born and raised in the same house that I'm living now. Um, and in the past 15 years, architectural changes have gone all <laughs> around me. I look around, and where I grew up has changed tremendously. But a group of us decided we don't want to change where we live. We want to keep it the same. We want to see things that are old and maintain that peace. And why we want to do that is because those changes take away the sense of place in New York City. And while we realize that you can't hold on to everything, I do, we do believe that development must be done with forethought and consideration. And the creation of historic districts does just that. It reassures us that the homes will keep the integrity and the original architect will preserve the fabric of the future in Sunset Park, not for our kids, but for our kids' kids, too. Um, these blocks instill a sense of place, history, and pride. I grew up on my block playing uh, stoop ball and our block parties are celebrations of what we have with our families. We look back at our memories and it makes me proud. I look up and down the block, I look at the flowers our families grow and sitting on the stoop and reminiscing about things that are going on. And it gives me just a sense of pride in this really big city where sometimes you feel all alone and you go back into those blocks and you feel a sense of family and that's really important. Um, it helps us preserve the beauty and celebrate the beauty. So I humbly ask you to help us preserve the beauty and celebrate the beauty of Sunset Park by preserving these blocks that we work so hard to maintain throughout our own uh, families and so that we could pass that on to our own families as years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Nice gentleman. Uh, my name is uh, Jason Stutz. I live at 46954 Street in Brooklyn with my wife Nina been there 15 years. We moved there because of what it already is. Um, I was looking at the picture in Bay Ridge. I said, oh, that's Bay Ridge. But uh, we had pictures from the LPC earlier of our neighborhood. And it, what we're talking about is something that inspires life in all of us. Um, our, when you walk down these blocks, they feel good. And that goes a lot deeper than just this is what we want. It, 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 it's subconscious, and it's important that we feel that way, that we feel like we belong. And you have that feeling when you walk down these streets, and it, it, it's beautiful, and we should keep it that way mm -hmm. for, for life's sake. Not A lot of the changes that are have been made just seem to be made for some instant gratification people making money and things like that that's not all that's important and so all four of these districts we feel like are important and we thank the lpc everybody who's worked on this i think would agree it just feels so good and when you see things that are you just have to be there and i think we all know I, that's all we need to say. It's a beautiful place, and we'd like to leave the beauty intact. Uh, thank you for your consideration. We hope you'll vote for it. All four. Thank you. Yeah. Can I have a, grab one question? Sure. Can I remember? Uh, sure. Thank you, Chair, for a quick, quick question. So here's my um, conundrum. Are we going to have four different parties? Yes, of course. Or one party? Five. <laughs> Five. That's right. Five. Each group gets, and then the big one. 
And then the big one. Okay. okay. Vamos. <laughs> Thank you. The next panel will be Susan uh, Blond, Lin Linda uh, Asin, and S Simon Bankov. Okay. No, I'll do the I'll do the end. Yeah. Three of each. Yeah, one of each. Thank you. So please identify yourselves and then you can start. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Council. Uh, I'm Linda Assini. I live at four four one Bay Ridge Parkway. And I would like to thank you for having us here today. And we're, of course, hoping that we will be uh, voted in. Um, Bay Ridge Parkway is, as, uh, as LPC said, predominantly an intact street. The street has a real sense of importance in the neighborhood. But uh, when you branch out into Brooklyn and other parts of New York, people know Doctors Row. Uh, they've been coming to physicians there for many years, there's generations of physicians, dentists, attorneys practicing on the street. Um, I know several of them personally. Um, I purchased the house in 1982. Uh, I came in with my husband at the time. He was an internist. I'm an RN. We purchased from a family practitioner who had purchased from a DO. My daughter is a surgeon. so we uh, kind of embody the medical, the caring and the medical professions that have lived and thrived on this very beautiful street. Um, the street also gives the individuals who walk up and down the street, and we get a lot, a lot of traffic. People get a real sense of uh, stability, strength, um, uh, sense of place, and our block association has uh, replanted all the tree wells. We've had more trees planted in uh, conjunction with forestry. And the block is once again beautiful and thriving. We are also deeply concerned, as Sunset Park beautifully brought out, uh, the changes are not enhancing or serving the community. Um, the changes that people want to make to these buildings just are not consistent with and don't really enhance the, uh, the people that live in the buildings and in the neighborhood. Um, I can tell you that since we have gotten to this, this place today, there's a sense of pride in our community that I did not sense before we started. It's, it's really, um, it's grown, it's, it's generated. People are like, yeah, we are this place. We are this community. And um, I think it's great. And I just, um, I'm hopeful and secure that you will vote for us. Thank you. We've waited for this day for years. Um, thank you for listening to us. My name is Susan Brown. I've owned a home on Bay Ridge Parkway, Doctors Road, for 50 years. Um, Landmarks preservation is going to be our salvation. Uh, their protection is crucial to our maintaining the integrity of our beloved block for now and the future. Um, I'll be brief. We'll be honored to be designated Landmarks Preservation Commission's first historic district in Bay Ridge, and we hope for more to come. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Council Members. Simeon Bankoff, Executive Director of the Historic Districts Council. Uh, I'm really happy to be here today These uh, to testify on all five of these historic districts. They are both uh, long 
Bay Ridge and Sunset Park are longtime projects that we've been working with the communities on. In Bay Ridge, as Lynn had mentioned, uh, the Sunset Park, I'm not, sorry, in Sunset Park, as <laughs> Lynn mentioned, uh, the Sunset Park community wanted some kind of recognition in the 1980s and protection for their neighborhood, so they hired Andrew Scott Dolcart, who is, ne who is one of New York's most preeminent uh, architectural historians to write a report getting a large section of the neighborhood on the National Register of Historic Places. That was in 1988. Please keep in mind that New York State only adopted its own Register of Historic Places in 1980. This was a reasonably new preservation strategy in our state, and that was one of the largest historic districts in the state at the time. However, fast forward 25 years, and while the NR status hadn't had any ill effects, it hadn't really helped preserve the wonderful character of the neighborhood. Um, so in 2012, late 2012, HTC met with Lynn Massimo and Lynn Tondrick and their neighbors and began working uh, through our Six to Celebrate program with them to help shape a picture-perfect community campaign to gain local landmark designation that they, they spoke about. Based on the NR research, um, neighbors can, uh, canvassed their neighbors. They met with a number of generations of elected officials, including Councilman Machaca, who has been so very helpful. Um, and created a popular community-led movement to help preserve their physical character of their neighborhood. Along the way, they forged ties with other community organizations and even helped rescue the last freestanding mansion in the neighborhood from demolition. They were among the first community groups to meet with this mayor's administration to request landmark designation and have been remarkably patient for the last five years it took to get us to this point. So thank you all very much for, for seeing this over the finish line. Um, particularly, I would like to just say, at the last when the Landmarks Commission mentioned that they met with the owners twice, it was because the first time a number of people in the community wanted to have it, you know, wanted to enlarge the historic district and in what I saw to be really unprecedented move, Landmarks listened to them, the agency listened to them and came out and came and did and expanded their project, which is fantastic. Now, with regard to our friends in Bay Ridge, um, Back in 2012, we also worked with community members in Bay Ridge and sponsored a survey of that remarkable neighborhood, which was funded with, by public funds from New York State. Um, we delivered the survey to the local council member, Vinnie Gentili at the time, uh, and the Landmarks Commission, but there was not a lot of community support behind it at the moment, so we, we sort of let the matter go. Imagine our delight years later when neighbors in the area got in touch with us about the possibility of landmark designation. We started working closely with these people. Fortunately, one of our staff lives in the area, so evening meetings were somewhat easier. Um, we also found a strong partner in Councilmember Brennan and, and leaders at the local community board. And let me be very clear that this project would not have happened without the remarkable work of Linda, who is the right person at the right time. We're genuinely thrilled that when Landmarks Commission act, reacted supportively to this proposal, in fact, fast-tracked this project. In all our years working with the agency and, th and with this process, I can honestly say this is one of the swiftest designations of a local historic district that we've ever seen. The positive agency action was made only more important by the current lack of designated properties in this area of Brooklyn. And given the community's support and interest in this project, we've been getting a lot of calls from neighbors um, wanting to know more about it. So, and given the Landmarks Commission's openness and the chair's commitment to spreading uh, the, the agency's influence in areas that have been under, underrepresented, we have hope that we'll see many more landmarks in southern Brooklyn and other areas of the city soon. So thank you all very, very much. These are two stories that um, I wish there were more of, but let's really celebrate them. Council member, you have questions? I think one one question that I have, um, and this is maybe to Simon. By the way, congrats, Bay Ridge. Congrats. Uh, and it's great that we're celebrating as South Brooklyn uh, neighbors. Uh, really to Simon, how, how important uh, is it that communities organize around this issue? And you played such an important technical role, but like really how important is it that communities come out and organize and build this kind of constituency around this kind of question? Honestly, um, this is, I'm not gonna say it's impossible without a strong community organization, but it's very, very more unlikely to happen. Uh, additionally, in addition to, the whole purpose of historic preservation is not about the regulation of architecture. It's about the celebration of a special sense of place and a community growing and feeling that it's that it has a voice in the future of its neighborhood. And without that communal voice, it's it's a kind of pointless effort. Additionally, 
because at the end of the day, every government action is reliant on community compliance, if you have a situation where no one is going to be compliant, where, where a community is incredibly, incredibly opposed to this, the Landmarks Commission is one of our least resourced agencies in the city of New York. They've got an enormous amount of work to do, and there are num enough people who want, who want their attention that they're not going to force it down the sort of necks of people who are just trying to get by. Instead, what they want are strong community partners who will help um, further the action so it becomes a success. So I think that uh, what the Sunset Park community did, which was truly remarkable, and was when I say picture perfect, was that they went door to door and actually analyzed it. And when Chair Srinivasan saw the charts that showed, oh, well, we've talked to 85% of people on this block, and of that 85%, you know, 76% said yes, and the other 24% were like, ah, oh, sounds okay. Like, those are actual numbers that they said, oh, wow, this is a real thing. It's people power. Uh, I hope you and the LPC are ready for five parties of uh, celebration. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe six. We'll get invited to Bay Ridge. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, no more questions from the council members. Wait a minute, is that, is there another panel, panel coming up? No. Can I make a statement? Sure. Thank you. Right. Council member Miller, why not make a statement? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as I sit and I, and I read through the pamphlets and I read the committee reports and, and, and I look up and I'm reminded of a home that I, grew up in my grandma's home in, in, in Prospect Heights that looks a lot unlike that in, in the blocks itself. And so I was downstairs, I was just talking, and I represent Southeast Queens, and, 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 and so what do we all have in common here? And that is the fact that 76% of New Yorkers rent, and to have this type of conversation that values home ownership, that values in communities and integrities of communities is, is not often what happens here at city council. And it's, it is difficult when it comes to uh, common issues that support homeowners that we can kind of coalesce around those common issues. And certainly in Southeast Queens, we have a few landmark communities that are very, very important. But it, what I find equally important is, is that um, I just appreciate the appreciation uh, for, for communities and, and the value of this committee and landmarks as, as communities transition, there's a number of things that happened and, and was mentioned by one of the other uh, uh, speakers earlier, is that that is how you preserve the integrity of communities by, by this, this is one tool of, of landmark and, and, and that is the beauty of this mosaic of New York City that, you know, sometimes you, you want Chinese, you want to go to Chinatown and, and do other things and, and just not that you can't get it on the corner, but you don't get the fullness and the richness of communities are getting lost. And so I would leave with this, there was, a t there was an article in one of the major dailies um, on the weekend section uh, about a month back, and it talked about um, the lack of housing in New York City and that we needed more density. And, and then it went on to say how dear communities such as Southeast Queens and, and South Brooklyn communities have such low density that like we're not doing our part. And, you know, I, 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 I reject that. It is the quality of life that we've worked so hard for, and not just to obtain, but to preserve that, that quality of life. And the fact that it is not mutually exclusive, that we cannot create housing and density where necessary, where applicable, and, and at the same time preserve the integrity of what we have here. So I, I, I thought that this is, sometimes you think this is a, a, a lone fight specific to, to you or your community, but then you see that there are others throughout the city that are fighting to preserve the integrity of their community as well. So um, I, I just wanted to add my two cents in that and, and how I uh, um, yeah, value the work that you're doing and, uh, 
and uh, I may have to invite you out <laughs> to, to, to help, although we, we actually have a, a pretty strong uh, landmark uh, committee that, 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 that works within the community to preserve the integrity of Southeast Queens. So thank you for your work. That's thank what I'm you. Say. And thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to say a few words. Thank you, Councilmember Miller. Yeah. So um, this, you guys are all done. Yeah. Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify on these items? Seeing none, I now close today's public hearing, and these items are laid over. On September 1st, the City Council held a 10-hour public hearing on, yeah, on the borough-based jails proposal and received Feedback on all EULA applications associated with the project. In order to exercise the Council's discretion over the non-mandatory EULA applications, the Council adopted a core resolution at last week's stated meeting. Those items are on the calendar for September 18. But to be sure, the Council accepted testimony on all EULA applications on September 5th, including the non-mandatory non -mandatory applications. I now open public hearings on LU numbers 518, 519, 520, 521, 522, 523, 524, 525, and 526. All witnesses will be limited to one minute. Uh, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on these items? Seeing none, I now close today's public hearing. All items are laid over. I would like to thank the members of the public my colleagues, council, and the land use staff for attending today's hearing. The meeting is now hereby adjourned. Great job, Peter. <laughs>